What's up guys, Matt Laidlaw here coming to you from Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson, LA area's oldest, largest, and finest Harley-Davidson dealership. So I'm gonna be doing a video on the new 6.5 GTS infotainment system. It's the new infotainment system that just came out in the 2019 model year. A lot of big improvements. I wish I had it on my personal bike, I really like it. Today was the first time I really dove into it and used all the features that it has to offer. So yeah, I really like it a lot. This bike that I'm gonna be demonstrating the new infotainment system on is a 2019 CVO Ultra Limited. The reason I picked this bike is because it already has the WIM, the wireless headset interface module installed on it right now. So I connected my personal S20 headset, wireless headset to the bike, and so I can use all the functionality. So I'm gonna be showing you guys the new menu, how you navigate around it. The new system is a lot more intuitive. The glass screen is new, it's Gorilla Glass. It's similar to what you'd find on like an iPhone. So I'm gonna be using my personal iPhone 7 with this demonstration. And then my headset, it's the official Harley Davidson. It's the Senna S20 wireless headset. And I'm gonna be showing you guys the menu, how intuitive it is to navigate around. And I'm gonna be showing you as well the Apple CarPlay on this system as well and demonstrating that. You gotta have three things in place when, to use the Apple CarPlay on this. You gotta have your phone, Bluetooth to the system. You have to have the wireless headset or a regular cord headset on other models other than this bike hooked up. So you have the voice connectivity and then you gotta have your phone USB jacked into the USB port to the right of the, the boom box here. So yeah, I'm gonna be going through kind of some bas basic functionality and giving you guys my first impressions on this system. And this is also gonna be kind of a, a demo slash light tutorial on the new system as well. All right, so this is the brand new 2019 Harley-Davidson infotainment system, the infotainment system GTS, the 6.5 GTS. So we're gonna fire it up here. I'm gonna fire it up in accessory mode only by holding down the, the trigger switch, the switch that cycles through your odometer. The new system is a lot faster, a faster processor. It only takes about half the time to boot up when compared to the previous infotainment system. So we're gonna start it up here, hit accept on the, the little warning screen at first. So the interface is all new. Um, I'm gonna to try to use the screen, just use the touch button screen for most of this walkthrough and kind of this demonstration I'm gonna be doing here. So as you can see, the home screen here is a lot more, it's a lot more simple and you've got three major icons for the three main functions of the infotainment system. You've got your music, your navigation, and then your phone as well. So the three, the three main purposes of your infotainment system are kind of right there front and center for you. And I will say one of the things that is easier about this system is it's a lot more intuitive, a lot more user friendly, and you can navigate through the system a lot easier and a lot quicker than the previous uh, infotainment system, the 6.5 GT. So at this point, and, and just for the record, so this is a 2019 CVO uh, Limited. So the CVOs all come with the WIM, the wireless headset interface module from the factory. So I'm using my existing uh, Senna S20 headset on this. So basically I'm taking my, my S20 headset, I'm gonna pair my headset to this, I'm gonna pair my phone to this as well, and I'm gonna demonstrate some of the main functions that this system will do. I'm not gonna go into everything, but this is just gonna be kind of my uh, walkthrough and kind of my demonstration of everything, and I'm also gonna kind of show you guys how everything works on this as well. So let's jump into this first. If you were buying this you know, brand new for the first time, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to pair your phone with the system. I've got an iPhone 7 here that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna first hit the phone button. And one thing that is kind of more intuitive and easier about this system is it asks you if you wanna connect to a device. So I'm gonna hit yes. And I'm gonna to go to the I'm gonna to go to the settings on my phone here. I'm gonna to go to the settings and bring up the settings on here. I'm gonna click on my Bluetooth and once I'm on my Bluetooth screen, it's gonna be setting up uh, the Bluetooth and being ready to pair. And then I'm gonna hit add new device and now it's searching 
for a Bluetooth device. And it should come up with Matt's iPhone 7. There you go. It found my phone. Click it. Pairing in progress. On my screen, it says that there's a, a Bluetooth request. And I'm going to hit pair on the Bluetooth request. Does the pin match? Yes. So pairing is successful. I'm going to allow it to sync my contacts. Emergency number, I'm going to put a no for now. Now, this is telling you that if you want to activate Siri, you hold down the voice button on the left thumb uh, control stick. If you click it once, you use the function of just the radio voice command. But if you hold it, you use the Siri voice command. So now that my phone is connected, I can do a couple things. I can call from it as well, and I can go to contacts, and I can sync all my contacts. I'm not going to do that just because I don't want to put my whole phone book on this, this bike right now. Another thing that's really nice is you've got a, a back button on the right finger stick where the I button used to be on the previous models. You have a back button now, so it would be the equivalent of clicking this button right here and going back. So now that I've got my phone connected, I can do a couple things. I can click music, and it's playing my music off of my phone. And then I can also make phone calls as well. So I can click calls and call people as well from the phone. Now that's calling right from the, 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 my phone through the infotainment system, but you can also hook up Apple CarPlay and you can make phone calls through that. I'm gonna show you guys how to use the CarPlay in just a second. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to hook up my Harley Davidson wireless headset. This is the Senna S20. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect this headset to the bike. I'm able to do that because this bike comes with the wireless headset interface module. If you don't want to go the wireless route, you can always just plug in the headset via the wire like, we, like you've always done in the past. But I'm going to show you guys how to connect the headset to the bike here. So we're going to go to the, the little gear icon at the bottom, that's the settings. And we're going to go down and we're going to go down to the wireless headset setup. This bike, the CVO Limited, comes with two headsets from the factory. So we're going to use my personal headset for this. I'm going to turn on my headset first, and that's done by holding both of these, the jog and the phone button at the same time. The blue, the blue light comes on. So now my, my Bluetooth headset is on. And now what I'm going to do is to pair it, I'm going to click on this pair rider, and I'm going to hold down this phone button on the back for about six seconds. And then it will say pairing and then the light is gonna flash red and blue rapidly. And then it shows up on my screen, the Boom Audio, it senses the 20S. I'm gonna click that, pairing in process. Now it's, now it's connected, it says status connected. So at this point, and it also tells me my, my battery life is at 100%. You can click configure and there's a whole ton of options here that I'm not going to go into right now that you can kind of configure for your personal taste as you're using your, your wireless headset. So I'm going to go back. So at this point I can take phone calls on my bike and I can do voice commands as well through my helmet. Now one of the big features that you get this year with the new GTS infotainment system is you get Apple CarPlay. Now Apple CarPlay, this is pretty important, it will only work if you have a, a headset connected and you have a mic available for voice commands. And then your phone also has to be plugged in to the USB port as well. I'm going to plug in the, the lightning cord or the Apple specific cord into the USB slot here. So I've got that plugged in there and then I'm going to plug in my phone. So now my phone is plugged in to the USB right there. So now that those, those three things are in place, I have my phone Bluetoothed, I have the headset connected either wirelessly or through the cord, 
and I've got my phone jacked into the USB port, now I can use CarPlay. So you can see here on the, the third icon on the screen, it changes from the phone icon to CarPlay. So I'm gonna click that, and now the interface changes pretty much completely. So um, you've now got the CarPlay here. And basically the main advantage to CarPlay is it's just a user interface that's very, very easy to use, and it's very familiar for Apple and iPhone users. You've got your icons here, only the apps that are compatible with the Apple CarPlay will show up here. So you're not gonna get like all your other apps, like your banking apps or your social media apps. It's just apps that are compatible with Apple CarPlay. So this is a very, very nice setup to use for like podcasts is a great one. And you're just making phone calls is very, very nice. You can, you can drag your your contacts up and down, which is another thing that's really nice about this screen is you can you can pinch and drag um, and, and kind of use this system like you would an iPhone. You've also got your apps as well, your maps, excuse me, your maps on here so you can use your Apple Maps. Personally, I prefer the HD maps that come on this system. So the pinching and zooming and moving around doesn't really work as well as the HD maps. So if you're gonna use Apple CarPlay, I still recommend using the Harley-Davidson maps. And you can go back to, to home and then hit, hit the navigation button really easily to go to the, the Harley-Davidson map. So this is the Harley-Davidson map that comes with the system here. And as you can see, you can pinch to zoom out or zoom in using your fingers just like you would on any phone and move around you know, the maps with your finger here. So, the map is a lot easier to navigate on this new system as well. So I'm gonna go back to our Apple CarPlay. The music is a lot easier to navigate as well. You got your artists, and you can scroll up and down just with the swipe of your finger. And so that's just a, a lot better user interface. You got album art on here and everything. And then your, your phone, Obviously your phone list is a lot easier on the Apple CarPlay as well. You can navigate it a lot better as opposed to clicking the letter and trying to navigate around like on the old system. So the new system is just a lot faster. It's a lot more user friendly. It's a faster processor so you can navigate things a lot better. The old system you'd have to press something and wait a couple seconds for it to uh, kind of register. Another thing that's really cool is this, this icon right here where you click this. This allows you to adjust your bass and your treble. treble. This audio routing is a lot nicer as well. Uh, this, this lets you to determine where you want your music and your communications and your prompts coming in, either the, the speakers or the headset. Me personally, this is how I like to set up my system. I like to have the music coming through the speakers and then the communications, so that's like your phone calls and your prompts, that's like your navigation prompts. I like those coming in through the headset. So when you're wearing your helmet, all those things will be routed into your helmet wirelessly. And again, um, something that's kind of cool with the CVOs now is you can, you can fade from front to back the, the music. So you can go heavy to the front speakers or heavy to the rear speakers. That was a, a function that a lot of people asked for on the old CVOs that wasn't available. But now you can kind of change the fade of the speakers. So pretty nice. Volumes, this is a nice screen as well because one of the biggest things that I, I found people having problems with is they didn't realize that there's two different volume controls. So you've got like your, your media, like your tuner, your radio, and then you've also got your prompts and navs and also your phone. So what I was finding is people couldn't get their phones to work because the volume was completely down and they couldn't figure out how to change the volume on their phone or change the volume on their navigation prompts. So they weren't re receiving those prompts because they couldn't hear them. And it, it was very difficult to find the menu to change the volume on these, different, uh, on these different things. So a lot of times when people came in and said, hey man, I can't get my system to work, it's because they had one of these volumes too low and they couldn't hear either the phone calls or their navigation prompts. So this is a lot easier to find that, it's just volumes 
right here on your audio settings page. So you've got your own, it's got its own designated button or menu to find all this stuff now. Audio routing, very important menu. And then volumes, also a very important menu. So it's just a lot easier to, to find that stuff now, which was another big advantage that I saw on this new system. Navigation here, you click this, this spyglass here, and this allows you to search for addresses. If you wanna search for a certain address, just like on the old system, it's quicker and snappier. I haven't tried this system out on the road yet, but um, I'm sure it's just faster and, and, and easier to, to navigate when you're out on the road. Here's where like, your saved address is, is gonna be. Points of interest, you can pick you know, airports, banking, gas stations, restaurants. That's, that's a lot the same as, as the old system. Of course, everything's faster on this new system. This is hotels. If you're looking for a place to sleep, you got the little bed icon there. And uh, this, this system also is a lot easier just to go back and forth between menus. Like I said, you've got the back button on the right turn signal button as opposed to the I being there on the 18 to back to the 2014 model of your bikes. So the back button's a lot easier to use and kind of navigate around. The star is your favorites menu, so you can program your favorites, whether it be a certain channel on AM or FM, or you can program like your, your favorites being like a media drive, like your phone or something like that, to quickly go to the type of audio that you want to go to. Here you have your intercom and CB functions. So you can, you can set those up from here. You can turn the CB on and off. I'm gonna to keep it off for now. Then your intercom is the two-way conversation between you and your passenger. So that's, that's on this headset icon here. And that's about the, the new system in a nutshell. The screen feels a lot better. It's Gorilla Glass, so it doesn't flex at all when you press the screen. It's just like a solid, it, it's basically the same as when you would touch like an iPhone. It's the same glass as like an iPhone or, or any real popular cell phone for that matter. There's less glare on this screen as well. The resolution is a lot better on this screen as well. So they did uh, up the resolution so it's clearer. Here's, here's the Apple CarPlay once again that I'm demoing. This button right here is the same as like the, the home button on your phone. It goes you back to your apps. So you've, the main functions that you're probably gonna use is uh, your phone. You can voice command as well. Um, one of the reasons why you have to have the headset installed and connected to use Apple CarPlay is because a big part of Apple CarPlay and the functionality and the benefit of Apple CarPlay is your ability to voice command uh, the Siri and tell her to call certain people. So yeah, that's a big part of this Apple CarPlay. But for me, it's just really the ease of navigating around your music and your phone is just a lot easier with the Apple CarPlay. So I'm a big fan. I, again, I wish I could install this system on my bike. It would be a no brainer if you could. But I, after uh, messing with this and kind of exploring the functionality of this system, I'm a real big fan. I really like this new radio. And then you've got maps as well. Maybe you prefer the Apple Maps over the, the bike's maps. But again, I feel like the bike, the Harley-Davidson maps that are integrated into the system is, are a little bit more seamless and um, they're a little bit less clunky. Uh, the, the pinch and zoom aspect of it is a little bit more responsive than what I've been able to get with just my phone. So I like that a little bit better. And you've got audio books on here as well. Again, it's just integrated really, really well. And so, yeah, I, I didn't really know much of what the benefit would be with the Apple CarPlay because I haven't used it on a bike before, but after messing with it and the Apple CarPlay, I, I am a fan of it. I think it's, it, it's nice. I would definitely want to use it if I had a 19. Um, and I always run with my headset hooked up to my bike at all times anyways. So the one thing that I think would be kind of a pain is actually having your bike hardwired into the, the USB port here. Um, my, my personal phone wouldn't fit in here if it had the case on it. So I'd have to run it without the case. And it's kind of a tight fit in the, in the cubby hole on the side here. 
So I, I wish Harley Davidson would, would make that cubby hole a little bit bigger. Although you can, you can take the foam out. You can take the foam out of there and make it a little bit bigger. But, you know, the foam's kind of nice so your phone doesn't rattle around in there. But that's about it, guys. So, yeah, music. If you, if you want to change the source, you can take it off Apple CarPlay and you can go to AM, FM. This bike does come with the Sirius XM receiver. All the CVOs come with a Sirius XM receiver. Um, and then you can go to Weather Band. If you, if you have an active subscription to XM Sirius, Sirius XM Radio, you can do the Weather Band or you can do live traffic as well. But if I wanted to go to like FM Radio, I could do that. And then I can just top, hit the top again and then go quickly back to Apple CarPlay. And so you can switch between your, your media sources a lot easier and quicker on this system as well. So it's just, it's just quicker to navigate, which helps out a lot because when you're out on the road, uh, it's nice to be able to go to your different functions of the infotainment system without really having to press a, but, a bunch of buttons to get to where you want to go uh, and, and keep your eyes on the road at the same time. So I feel like this system, you can keep your eyes on the road a lot easier and you can get to where you want with just a couple clicks as opposed to you know, three or four clicks. This system, I feel like, is kind of taking it down to like two clicks to do any function you want on the system. Like I said, the, the music on here, the Apple Music, is a lot nicer to go through your library, just go through your artists and put who you want. Again, you can swipe with your finger as opposed to always clicking the arrows on here. So that makes it a lot easier. And that's about it, guys. So yeah, if you have any questions on the system, uh, leave them in the comments below. Uh, I try to get back to everybody, but this is the first time I've really dug into this thing and tried to use all the features available on here. And of course, I'm not, uh, not out on the road, but so far I really like it. Uh, I think it's a big improvement. It's not just like a, uh, you know, a, a reskinned radio that does a lot of the same stuff. There, there really are some significant improvements in this GTS system. So, 